with his disciples before the apostle and her. God the Father also prepares his disciples before sending them out and making them apostles. God makes sure to equip his apostles and his prophets with the tools they need to succeed in his assigned task. But often the tool that they need most is simply trust in God's ability to meet their every need. The tool that they need most is faith in Jesus Christ. So what about earthly fathers? How do we prepare our children for sending them out? Well, fathers are called to instill their children with knowledge, knowledge that they are loved. This takes many long hours of playing with our children. I've heard fathers make the excuse, I don't have long hours, I don't have much time to spend with my children, but I spend quality time with them. We need to spend quantity time with our children, as well as quantity time. It takes the effort of allowing a child to help us fix something that's broken around the house, even though it's going to take twice as long to fix it and be twice as hard because the child will get to spend time with us. Love is giving up our desire to watch the game and being present to watch their game. Love may be sharing our desire to watch the game with our child and just sitting down with them with arm around them and teaching them to cheer for the right teams, right? <laughs> Love is sharing our interests with them, but it is also sharing and participating in their interests. A child who knows that they are loved by their father has a powerful, powerful defense against many of life's challenges. But fathers are also to instill their children with learning and education. Education is often nuanced by personal strengths, weaknesses, and interests. One child may need an education that prepares them to work in a technical field. Another child may need an education that prepares them to work in an agricultural field. And another child may need an education that prepares them to work in an academic field. Each child needs to learn according to their interests and their abilities. And we, as fathers, need to take time to know what those are. Fathers also instill a sense of moral propriety, a healthy work ethic that neither holds work so high that it becomes an idol and our children become workaholics, nor uh, a disdain for work that leads to laziness and good for nothing that drain our society. Fathers teach their children how to love their spouses by loving their wives and how to treat other people with respect and dignity in all situations. Most of this teaching is done subconsciously. Fathers teach their children not only what is wrong, but what is right. But the single greatest gift a father can instill in their children is faith in God. This faith must be founded on God's Word. It must be tempered by studying the Bible. So that when it is challenged, as it most certainly will be in this anti-Christian society, their faith will stand up against the onslaught. We cannot give our children pat answers without allowing them to probe more deeply into God's word for the answer, answers that will withstand the attack. We must challenge them to be strong in their faith, to know what they believe and why they believe it. Otherwise, unless God miraculously intervenes, their faith will collapse at the first sight of the challenge. A strong faith is a solid foundation on which God can build an immense coliseum of righteousness and service in His honor. A strong faith is the bedrock of God's working in a person's life. Fathers, are supposed to be people who not only send their children out, but prepare them 
over the course of years, through their growing years, so that when it comes time, they can be sent, not only be sent, but be ready to face the world. If it's a father's job to prepare and to send out, what's the response of those who are sent? What should be the response? The first and most obvious answer should be to go. Those who are sent need to go. But think about all the responses of the people that God sent. We have everything from the eager Isaiah who says, Ooh, here I am, send me, send me. To Jonah who said, send me where? Forget that. And walk the other direction. The first and most obvious answer is to go. But not only should we respond by going, but people who are sent should go with the hope and the desire and the aim to fulfill the sender's expectations. Those who are sent should make the sender proud. God sent Abraham to the promised land to found a nation, and Abraham became the father of many nations. God sent Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses went to Egypt, and he led the people out. God sent the prophets with messages, which they all delivered to the people. God sent His one and only Son to die on the cross and to pay the penalty for the sins of anyone who would repent and accept His forgiveness. And that's just what Christ did. Earthly fathers also send out their children and should hope that their children will lead a life of faith in Jesus Christ that is both productive and happy. But too often, as fathers, we expect our children to do something that they may not be well suited for. My child is going to be a doctor, even though they hate biology, are terrible at science and math. My child's going to take over the family business, even though they have shown no inclination towards it, and they really want to be a teacher. Father, we need to be careful what expectations they have for their children. We should strive to know our children and to help them achieve their maximum potential both in life and in faith. We need to be careful which goals we set for our children and make sure that those are the goals that God would have us set for them so that when they go out, they will want to accomplish them and be fulfilled in so doing. When we consider God to be Him who sends us out, then we need to ask one final question. And that's, where's God sending us? What is our God-given destination? Some people would say, well, <coughs> God's sending us to church, right? No. That's wrong. God is not sending us to church. But before you get excited and say, Yeah, man, your pastor told me I ain't got to go to church anymore. I'm out of here. There's somebody standing at the door. Make sure Dennis doesn't get out. <laughs> Dennis is already gone. <laughs> Ken, will you go find Dennis? Make sure to tell him that I'd make fun of him when he wasn't even here. <laughs> so before you get excited, and say that the pastor says, I don't need to go to church. Listen to very carefully to what I'm saying. God is not sending us to church. Why should we go to church? Because God is sending us from church. Church is the home base. Church is the command center. Church is the place of origin. Church is God's home and our home from which God sends us out. So then where is it that he's sending us? Matthew 28, 19 says this. You can go backwards if you want. It's the last verse. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God is sending us out into our community. He is sending us out into our nation and into